obviously obviously as you can see it's just a fireplace that needs to be done up nothing too crazy pretty straightforward uh, we've got an external over here got another external around that box let's get right into it. i'm gonna give you the best little tips and tricks i can get for you the rest is history and stay tuned it's gonna be a long video but it's gonna be a very very good video you're gonna wanna watch this i've got all my makita tools i just need a screw gun right there i got the whole saw i just got a saw tool there of course i got a t-square because of the fire board being 13 millimeter i've got 42 millimeter screws that i'm gonna use comfortable going with bigger screws than i do going 25 millimeter screws right I know if you're new to the industry, you probably don't know that there's a lot of different types of plasterboard or cement board that you can use for different jobs. This right here is 13 millimeter fire stop plasterboard. It's designed specifically for a place that's gonna have a lot of fire activity. Need a tape measure, pencil, and a knife. So first thing I'm gonna remove all these nuts right here. Very nice. I'm also gonna trim all this overhanging plasterboard there. I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring. So you just wanna measure from timber to timber. You wanna get the center of these guys right here. I'm gonna measure around uh, this black bit, not actually the silver bit. Obviously, I'm gonna come from the timber, not of the plaster, because that's not where you wanna be and just measure to the center of this box, 272 time measurement. And the full length, 292 meters. Take off five mil so it actually fits. Seven, 10, I'm gonna go 705. 1400. I've got blocks on the ground so I can come off the block to get the rest of my measurements. So this is the other center of that and the height of this, right? Uh, you gotta have something on the ground to measure off that. 590. And for this boat right here, it should be the same, but I'll double check. So I got 1190. Damn, that's not good. I have a little situation here that we have to fix. So the height of my plasterboard that I'm gonna be using today is 1200 high. And the height of the ground to where this lands is a little bit over 1,200. If I had a draw in there, it'd be like... I'm going to start with the top instead. 145, 1950, 2095. That's what the measurements I need. 145, all the way here. 2095. This is the full piece right there. I'm going to slash that all the way through. Now I got my line up here. I want to mark my height before I snap the top piece. I'm going to uh, go through it with my knife again. Now I'm going to start snapping and cutting everything. Very compact plasterboard. Very hard to cut. I'm going to kind of trim the top a bit. I'm going to quickly glue it. Extra strength. I'm gonna leave that like that. I'm gonna cut it once I put it up. Very heavy and I'm by myself. You need a hand for this. <laughs> this is the piece I'm gonna need to finish off that bottom. If you're new to this page, I suggest you watch my how-to videos that I make daily. I definitely have a lot of videos on how to hang plasterboard. So I'm gonna do a combination of glue and screw, just so I, I feel better inside. Cool. Just like that. Oh. 
All that is left is just these little pieces on the, on the bottom. And that day 705 by 5. Okay. Now for the easiest part. Tap them little internals, first coat that. Perfect holes, I like that. And now I'm gonna put externals on that guy right there. One in every three videos I've made ever has been on externals. If you're new to this page, go through my videos and you'll find a lot of videos explaining exactly what I'm about to do right now. There's no need for me to explain to you what I'm doing. Okay, let's go. Let's put on some external on and make it look mwah. Add on two millimeters. Oh, a little bit up there. Now you're probably wondering, how come I did the outside of the, the XC, but I didn't do the inside, like I didn't staple the inside. I know that's what you're wondering, so I'll tell you. Now, the reason why I left the inside and did all around the outside is because I want everything to touch and everything to line up. By leaving the inside, that means there's still movement on the exit. So when it comes to doing this part of the business, I want to make sure that all three XC lined up and touch. So is the other side, so is the other way around. This gives it a better finish. Come on, let's go. In the middle of the joint. 